Hello, everybody. I guess yeah, we should be going here. I'm uh, I'm just checking to make sure. Yep, everything's uh, on uh, up up and up and running as it were. Uh, and uh, uh, I I say hello to you. And I'm t this week. I'm uh, actually feeling pretty good shape today. I'm not that uh, that terribly sick. I really went through something last week, and I don't know what it was. But uh, tomorrow I get my big operation on the eye, on the eyelids. What's wrong here? What is that? Oh, I had something, some smuts there. Anyway, uh, oh, you know, I, I haven't, put, I didn't put on my cap, but since I've got a good haircut going here, I probably can keep it that way. Anyway, um, this is the last show I'll be doing this week. I won't be doing any shows for the rest of the week because uh, tomorrow morning at uh, 6.30 in the morning, I have to be there at 6.30 in the morning. I hope they have some good reading materials, okay? But I have to go uh, to the hospital at uh, 6.30 and do my uh, prep, prop, prep, 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 whatever, get ready for the operation at uh, the early, early hour of uh, 6.30. So I don't know what's going to, what's going to happen anyway. So uh, I'm going to admit all these people. Yeah. Shecky isn't here. Shecky's usually here. I will see if he, oh, there he is. Okay. Admitting all. Uh, 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 yeah. Yeah. Let me see here. Uh, uh, let me uh, uh, get him to join. Admit him. Okay. There we go. Anyway, I'm not going to, as I was saying, I'm not going to do any uh, programs of this week. Let me turn on the air conditioner too here. I'm not going to be doing any shows this week because number one, I'm going to look like somebody beat the crap out of me. Uh, and uh, uh, sec uh, secondly, I just probably won't be able to see things and it won't be good. Okay. So you haven't done, huh? I'm you having, it's a thing called ptosis. Where my eyelids, if you may notice, my eyelids are kind of like droopy, okay? And they droop down <coughs> over the pupil. So that if I'm going to sit there and watch television or read, I have to kind of go like this, you mm -hmm. know, uh, in, order to, in order to see. This will lift the lids. And uh, cool. But it, it should take me uh, several days to at least get into any shape where I, I have to have ice packs on my eyes for three days hmm. so, you know it's not going to be fun but shecky will come and visit me right shecky <laughs> no <laughs> not not bloody likely <laughs> no to watch some guy with ice bags on his eyes yeah come come watch well no you but you can run off to the refrigerator and get new ice bags for me oh there you go <laughs> oh, wait a minute i've got marjorie for that excuse me i don't need you no comment. Yeah. No Maybe comment. Marjorie could go visit. What? Maybe Marjorie could go visit Checky. Yeah, Marjorie <laughs> go visit oh, Marjorie's Checky. always welcome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> mm. But anyway, so I um, uh, you know, so I I'm not looking forward to this. It doesn't, it doesn't Yeah, it doesn't, but you'll get it done and it'll be behind you. Yeah, yeah. I imagine. Yeah. It, but uh oh, it can go wrong. Here we go. Everything can go wrong. <laughs> I mean, you know, immediately I have to go online and find out everything about this, and they do go wrong. Well, let's, you could do one eye at a time in case they blind the you. List, Alex. No, it's not that they blind people. It's that they do it, but it doesn't work, so they have to do it again. Oh, okay, right. don't worry about it then. They'll do it again. Yeah, they'll they'll get it right eventually. You can get it right okay. eventually. Yeah, yeah. Eventually, eventually, you won't be you won't be able to close your eyes. <laughs> right, right. So uh, anyway, so at six thirty in the morning, I have to be there. Sure. Why don't they operate? You know, at three o'clock in the afternoon. Well, that's when they're going to do it. No, no, no. They're going to do it. At, <laughs> they're going to do it at eight thirty, and I will. Okay. Be, it's an hour long operation. I'll be out of there by nine thirty. And okay. then I, I, I'm ready to be picked up at 1030. Well, would you prefer that than four o'clock? Well, Marjorie, in the meantime, she's going down with me, but she's going to take that time between me going in for the operation and when she has to pick me up to go down to the SPCA and pick up a seeing eye dog. 
<laughs> no, there's a good diner on right near there. Well, how long are you going to sit in that diner? As long as I can. As long as you can. Yeah. So well, someone calls her and says, come pick the guy up. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, I, I uh, they always want you there two hours early for an operation. I'm ready to go. I don't know what their problem is. You have to go through the TSA, so you know. That's you know what they, but they do. They <laughs> is they do everything. They check your. Oh, by the way, good news. I don't have COVID. <laughs> oh, good. No, because they had to take a COVID test on me, for the right. hospital, and they took one on Friday. My doctor, and today they told me to be at the hospital. So I assume I passed my COVID test. Thank God I crammed for it. <laughs> Yeah. With a hellacious cold, you passed. It wasn't. <laughs> it was. I don't know where it came from. It was. It was just. I had a cold. And you know, I don't go out that much. I don't go places. I mean, you catch cold from other people, right? You don't get them. You know. No, they're cold germs. I think in the atmosphere. Maybe I'm wrong. I, you. I think you may be wrong. I don't know. I think what you need to do, it's like anything else. Well, then who's the first person who had the cold to start passing it along? Somebody no, had to be, to, you know. I, I have no idea. I don't know about that, but I feel like somewhere. It, I don't know who had the first one, but I feel like it had something to do with Tom Fuller with monkeys. I don't know why. Oh, I just dude. feel like that was the initial. Well, you know, I, I was going to take a ivermectin and try and clear it up. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I got my flu shot on Thursday, and I was loopy for like three days. Really? I wasn't sick, but I was just like, eh, I don't think I'm going to get behind the wheel of a car. I yeah, don't we, think I'm probably going. next week. Marjorie and I should go get our flu shot. I still don't know how we got our third shot. That I don't understand. Because I don't the drugstores have it. Yeah. Yeah, but but also they're saying you must have gotten Pfizer instead of Moderna, right? Moderna. No. We got Moderna. Moderna. They get you Moderna. Okay. Yeah. You got Moderna? Yeah. Yes. Didn't you take oh, what? Yeah, no one 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 just a couple Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Hold on. One at a time. One at a time. It's what, the what? exact same shot they gave you for the second shot. Yeah. It's not a, it's not any special. Oh, I thought I thought your first one was Pfizer. I'm sorry. Okay. No, first no, one was Moderna. Uh, Moderna. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good. People don't seem to be giving Moderna third shots here. I mean, I had my Pfizer third shot and my flu shot at the same day, but they weren't giving Moderna. They weren't giving Moderna. They were not. Yeah. Well, my and I saw the CDC said today we're only giving Pfizer. Yeah. So, I don't yeah. Know. so how did we get? What I want to know is how we Pfizer. How we got the how, approvals. How, how, how we got yeah. Moderna. I don't know how you got any third shot at all. Yeah, that's crazy. Did, did you? I wanted it, and you know something? If they needed another six or eight months, I'll take it again. Yeah, they don't know good. how long these shots are good for. I don't know if they even recorded this. I mean, they knew they were giving us a third shot because we had to show them our card. Okay. You know, which was laminated. You but they, did they did put you... it on the card that there was a third no, shot? They don't they... No, they don't. they don't. They don't, huh? Did you get an email? Did you get a confirmation? With I you? did I, something I think... bad. I did something bad. I had the cards laminated. <laughs> but they don't do they don't touch the cards but i got a uh, for your records thing from cvs we got them. a for your records thing too that said that we got this yeah. this yeah. this extra yeah. shot. and they have to report it to the state don't they I don't know. maybe don't they have to report it but what they did is when we were there they gave us a two one for each of us they gave us a thing that said that we'd got the the shot. shots in the yeah. last five years well, who cares? I got the third shot. So yeah, but when I was getting my flu shot, I'm sitting there, and there's some older man standing at the counter, screaming at the guy behind the counter. I'm not getting a shot because it's just big pharma making money and blah oh. blah 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 blah. I had that with a girlfriend that I grew up with. She lives in Arizona. <laughs> yeah, just big pharma is making money. Yes, big pharma is making money. So. Yeah, but as I'm I'm sitting there, I'm just watching the line for the pickup getting longer and longer as this old man is just ranting and raving. Probably. And the guy behind the counter, what's he supposed to do? You know, get oh, the yeah. fuck out of here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a question. Yeah. So do you guys have from your health authority, do you have this? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so when you got your third shot, 
-hmm. does that not automatically update that thing? So when they scan that code, you now have your third shot? No, I don't know. It, 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 it's not listed on there. I don't Let me think put okay. it that way. But here, they told us up here that's what they're going to be doing with us. Anytime we get any additional booster, well, Alex, I, I redid. I redid. I redid, the, the I redid this. Seconds aren't listed on no, here either. I, I redid this one the Alex, other day. Alex, they don't see the dates on here. Yes, they do. Where it just says when this expired. on the very front expires. it goes. Oh, it goes expires. Uh, yeah, that's not the dates if you got them. Um, but wait a minute. Hold on a second. Here, here, you've got um, um, the the what do you call it? the the barcode, the, the, the funny the QR code, Q, QR right. code. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, then there's a thing I got here that because I put went in for it again the other day, and COVID nineteen vaccination Excelsior Pass Plus, and what that has is uh, the same thing, only it doesn't have an expiration date on it. Uh, my my okay. uh, those oh, days. Oh, vaccination details. There you go. And, they, and it, those days. It, it, it has those those uh, date four or five, and then those date five three Moderna. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. My mine here says vaccine type up blah blah blah, blah 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 the first one and then the second one. But the yeah. third one's not there yet. The third one isn't on here. No. Hmm. No. So but you I, didn't really get one. But they asked when was your <laughs> second shot. And I put that in to get the information. So maybe they what is that up, Alex? Which one is that? What? I just have the one that says wallet. I know. Let's take That's five it. days up here. This, to, this uh, is a new uh, thing that somehow when I redid it the other day, it, it gave me called the COVID vaccination called? Excelsior Plus. Excelsior Plus? Yeah, don't worry about it now. Do it later. I think you get a hot towel with that one. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you get a picture of Biden getting his booster shot. <laughs> By the way, uh, uh, anybody here live in San Francisco? I'm trying to think. No. Well, near, yeah, I'm, uh, I didn't he's, either. He's you, know, back. you know, Frank Somerville is over at, oh, uh, over yeah. at uh, Channel Two. Totally. Yeah. 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 He got the. Uh, he got the. Uh, uh, what do they call? <laughs> He was furloughed. furloughed. He was oh, furloughed, and let me see here. I got the reason why here for you. This is this this is this is what's happening with the press these days. And I yeah. got to admit, I don't know what Somerville's politics are or whatever, but he's right in this case. San Francisco News a anchor has been taken off the air in dispute over the Gabby Petito coverage. Yep. You're gonna love this. Hey, enough with that wonderful yeah. angel who is a well, piece wait, of you Wait know a minute, what? hold on. You're gonna love this. Well, that's what this sources is told the Mercury News that Frank Somerville, the anchor for Bay Area Fox t station KTVU, was suspended indefinitely after he suggested a segment on Petito should include a line questioning the amount of media coverage her case had received. Exactly. Yeah, now, a thousand what? people went to her funeral yesterday. Yeah. Why? You know, how is he wrong about that? I mean, I, 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 don't, I, I don't know if you and I were talking about it the other day, but uh, Shecky, but the other night with my guys I talked to on Zoom, we were saying it's, it's one of these stories that, okay, it's a, it's a story, but it's really not a, an important story. Well, because she's 22, she was white and blonde, probably had blue eyes. She wasn't 40 African American and weighed 200 pounds. And they'll make a movie. And then we don't yet. give a shit about those. Oh, yeah. Movies. And they've well, sold the movie. Oh, well, right if you so were a fat white girl, we wouldn't give a shit about her. <laughs> oh, same thing. Absolutely. Yeah. Alex, Alex, did you see that Frank Summer, Somerville back in May um, was pulled off the air during the newscast because he was slurring his words and he appeared extremely intoxicated? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, but this is a different deal altogether, though. It is, but you know, maybe, and, and, and I is. and I think he, you know, he's right. You know, we take a story like this. I was telling Marjorie this the other day. We take a story like the Petito story, and we run it to death. Yeah, I mean, okay, you found her body. That's news. The autopsy said it was a homicide. That's news. We can't find the boyfriend. That's news. But every day there's an update. We can't couldn't find him today. We couldn't find him tomorrow. We couldn't find him. You know, him and not to yesterday. not to denigrate her, she gets in a van with some creep to travel across country. They're engaged. Yeah, yeah. no, they're 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 engaged, right? But they're I engaged. loved him. 
He was so wonderful. Well, I well, I'm not, I'm, me. I'm it's not because they have all the, it's, it's because they have all that footage of the police pulling them over and her crying. And well, if they didn't have any of that footage, it would be less of a story. Right. Well, somebody you took know. it. Some a, a passerby. Right. Took it. No, it was the uh, it was the. No, it, it was from a body cam. Body, body cam. cam, but it's it's oh, it's, it? it's, yeah. it's the girl in the well, right? It's it's be only because she's yes. a cute very little white, very she's good. little white girl, yeah, and girl people who, think she's attractive, so it's become this big thing. The girl in the well, yeah, yeah. I remember yeah, when I was a kid, the girl in the well was a bit. None of you remember this. I don't think you. No, it was a massive story back in what was it, the forties or early. 50s. Yeah, well, when I was a kid, what and what was her name? I know I had her oh, name. She was like six year old. Uh, I can't remember her name. What was the story? The kid oh, fell wow. down a well. And, and because in the, especially in those days, oh right, there, there were lots of wells everywhere then. that were just open. Yeah. You know, Woody Allen put it in radio days. The whole family. Yes. Oh yeah, that's in there, there too. But it's also Ace in the Hole, the Billy, yeah. Billy Wilder film. A yeah. Ace in the Hole is a very good Billy Wilder film about using something yeah. like that for press purposes. Yes. And, and building press uh, uh, outrage. You know. Uh, off a subject, which is because some guy's trapped in a mine. I think her name was Kathy something. Kathy, uh, you're right. Uh, Kathy, uh, I'll, it'll come to me before the hour's over. I want to say ficus or something, but I, don't I think you're right. I think you're right. Did Lassie find her in the well or what? Kathy Fiscus. <laughs> Wait a minute, Fiscus. Fiscus. Yeah. Uh, and they found her and she was dead. And then oh. everyone went home. And yeah. the real one went home. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but Woody Allen used it in radio days. Yeah. And, 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 I, and I know why he used it, because when I was a kid, that was a big, that was a big story. Oh, it was huge. It was huge. Because I was Poor a little- Kathy Fiscus is down in the well, and we're trying to rent, you know, okay, great. <laughs> however, however, the press was different in those days because they didn't have the, like, the web and the internet. Blah, 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 blah. And the video. They couldn't have live video. So you were getting, there. you weren't getting updates every three seconds. Right. Ma imagine now you'd have a live well cam 24 <laughs> seven. Yeah. 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 Uh, but Kathy Fiscus, that was a big story. That and was... you know, all the three networks would have their anchors anchoring the news from the side of the well. Right. My question oh, yeah. is, kids fell into wells all the time. This kind of thing was not unusual. Uh, and I'm just wondering, why that story got traction? What about it? What did it have an availability that other stories didn't? Maybe again, she was a cute little white girl with blue eyes and blonde hair. I don't know. Yeah. What about wasn't there Jessica Jessica something in, in the 80s? Maybe Jessica, yes. Maybe in Jessica. Texas. Yeah. Yeah. Alex, Mike has his hand raised. I know I was looking. Mike. Well, it's just, it's funny watching back in history and watching the little lily pads that have led us up to this. Uh, the one I was going back to was John Bonet Ramsey, right? Yeah. The little beauty pageant, the little white, beautiful little beauty pageant girl. I mean, little boys and little girls, I hate to say it, they go missing every single day. But there was one before the web, before anything, um, that you'd look at the National Enquirer for years and years and years, she was making the cover of that and there'd be stories and specials. The interesting evolution now is that back then, if a newscaster were to say, hey, you know what, we're giving too much coverage to this, people would say, okay, now a newscaster says, hey, they criticize it in any way, this outrage culture that we live in, they lose their job for that. But this is behavior that we have exhibited for decades, ever since the girl in the well. It's fascinating to watch how this is evolving. Yeah, well, I mean, um... I think that there are two, two reasons why a story will gain traction. Number one, you have to have a cute kid. You know, it, it could be a cute black kid, but it has to be a cute kid, all right, or a cute woman, or an uh, attractive woman. Well, that's why and, Al Sharpton and, went yeah. on to with Tawana Brawley, because she's kind of a cute African woman, you right, know. Right. But what happened here is also the other factor that you need is availability of footage. In other words, if they didn't have all that footage, <clears throat> the body cams, and I think there was one couple who did videotape them when they were in a restaurant arguing. Uh, if we they didn't have that, it wouldn't be as big a story. Yeah. 
And again, I don't know the woman, didn't know the woman, but I believe she was a very troubled woman. <laughs> well, that that is, is no excuse for why she gets murdered. No, All but right? why should we be covering it when she wasn't exactly um, well, if Girl she, Scout if, of the Year? If she were, went to church every Sunday and was a uh, model citizen and all of that, is that any less reason to cover it? You know what I'm saying? It, I don't think I don't agree with you. That that's a reason. That makes it, I think it also it, it also rolls in for all the <clears throat> true crime obsession, <throat> the podcasts, and you know all this stuff. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and also the fact that the boyfriend immediately jumped in the car and went home, and then <laughs> went somewhere. You know, so they had yeah. an extra hook. Yeah. Wait, he went home and grabbed his money and passport and his credit cards and and left and his parents knew where the car was because they went to pick it up hmm. yeah so anyway and now i the um, yeah this, end of this, I just, this was just on the internet um a new person has come into the case who's going to solve the whole case yeah i'm john benet <clears throat> <father, clears throat> no it's, it, it's not uh excuse me got gargly voice here uh it's not um it's not who you think it is. I mean, certainly Nancy Grace has had her two cents worth. Oh, Rudy Giuliani's going to get involved? No, no. <laughs> Dog the Bounty Hunter. Oh, yeah, I saw that yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> went, well, over, went over to his house and checked it out to see where it's been, blah, blah, blah. And he's going to go, he's going to be he's caught now because them. Dog the Bounty Hunter is on the case. Now we got something. Now we got something. This is yeah. good. Yeah. Before it wasn't a story, but now the dog, the bounty hunter, is on it. <laughs> That's good. Maybe Tiger King could get paroled and he can go after the <laughs> He could go after him. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, <clears throat> I'm trying to clear my throat. Excuse me, folks. Um, uh, I think, uh, you know, they should, uh, I would love to see you, you and I, Shecky, love a particular show that we watch every week. Mm -hmm. And and that's um, um, the thing about the cruise ship. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's it called? Something Mediterranean. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I can't below, think of below deck. Below deck. Below deck. Mediterranean. Below deck. And really what it's all about, folks, if you've never seen it, is a, cruise, a little cruise ship, a yacht, a little yacht, as it were. And uh, people rent it out. And uh, they then go floating around on it, and it's and they hook up and they drink and they. Whatever. I love that show. <laughs> exactly, it's I watched that. It's see, <laughs> that's right, Marjorie. Marjorie, <laughs> you watched I've that again? I've never seen it. Huh? What's it on? Since we were just on it, it's and, on. Uh, I'm trying to on Hulu or one of those. A and E, it's on A and E, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I remember when A and E was arts and entertainment? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> History? No. Well, yeah, remember when it was art or music? What? Remember when MTV was music? Yeah, yeah. But I anyway, have anyway, friends were just on that show, and uh, they came back, and they won't tell me any of the details except the three couples that went are still together. That's all I know. <laughs> Wait, what's this? I well, have, he knew uh, someone who was on the ship. Yeah, they just came back about three weeks ago. Oh, you mean they, they were working on the ship? No, no, no. They were on the show. Yeah. They were. Yes. No, they were working on the ship, though. They were like still. Yeah, they were passengers. Oh, they, oh, they were, were passengers. Oh, yeah. oh well, they, 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 nobody, they, nobody cares about the goddamn passengers on that. Ship. <laughs> you know, they come and they go, but these people are below deck fighting with each other. You know, just like the love boat, man. Yeah. And those people below deck are only on the ship for like five weeks. It's not yeah. like yeah a cruise ship where you have to sign on for nine months. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, it's a very nice cruise ship. I would, would I'd love to go on that ship. Well, each year it's a different ship, yeah. usually. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes it's a sailboat. Sometimes it's a motor. Well, they, no, they have, that's another series they do. It's below yeah. deck yacht or something. Well, now there's Hell also yacht. below deck um, yeah. Norway, below deck Australia, below yeah. deck Hudson River, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it goes to Albany and back. The, yeah, one yeah, right. the, the episode's only one, one episode in that yeah. series. Um, hmm. But uh, it, it, there's something addictive about that show. Yeah. My wife hates it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
She goes, turn that <laughs> crap off. <laughs> It's just new packaging for the same old human drama that we're drawn into no matter what. And if you could repackage it, the same. Well, it's perfect. What I, what, I, what I love is that they package this all as something called, ready for this? Reality. Yeah. <laughs> well, I told you, they have an edit room on the ship. Yeah. They have an edit bay on the ship. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And we, reality, and we, and, and reality and, and, is yeah. us. It's got to be a big <laughs> ship because, I mean, they got to put up the people who are taking the tours. Yeah, they're yeah. about 150. Yeah, it's only eight people. And then they're like maybe the eight people, nine people. Below deck. Below yeah. deck. But then you've got to have the cameraman and the editor and the sound yeah. person and the da 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 and the da da da. Yeah. So really, and where do, where do they stay? In steerage. <laughs> yeah, there's, I think there's more rooms on there than you think down below. Though, because there's an engineering, there's an engineering guy. You never right, see. there has to be an engineer. You never, and all that you never see stuff. an engineer, do you? Every once in a while, you'll catch him when something's broken. Mm, yeah, really. Oh, okay. But I mean, it, could, it would be nice if, like, they hit an iceberg and we you know, <laughs> in the Mediterranean. <laughs> Just something, you know. Well, that'll be the Norway series. <laughs> 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 There's an iceberg um, off of um, the coast of Oslo. Yeah. Oh well. <laughs> well, what do you what do you guys all think of Captain Sandy? I like her actually. <laughs> Who's Captain Sandy? She's the captain <laughs> of what? The boat of the love boat. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know she's a no nonsense type. I'll tell you that. Oh yeah, she she gets rid of people sometimes. I can't yeah. believe you all listen to this. <laughs> what do you mean you can't believe it? You haven't watched it. You don't know. You you might become addicted to it. Love yeah. boat? I don't. Think if it was so. in Greek, you'd be watching it with subtitles. Hi, Mandy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that, you're right. Uh, it, 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 you watch Grand Design. I love Grand Design. Well, you love Grand Design, but it's simply. <laughs> Below deck Mediterranean with people building a house. That's all. <laughs> well, Nobody, my boat. Nobody's going to see this, right, Ox? Nobody's going to know I watched that, right? <laughs> <laughs> we're, hey, proud, we're proud, proud to say proud, we do. I have trouble that my wife and I have watched on Netflix. They just released a new season of it. Have y'all watched that uh, Amazing Vacation Rentals show on, on, on Netflix? No. It's really good. Because these are actual like oh, yeah, I saw a couple of them. Eh, it's not a the grand design is the granddaddy of those kind of shows, you know. Oh man, that new season came out. <laughs> seven new episodes of that show. My wife was like, she was so excited to watch those. We inhaled those in an evening. She was so excited to watch. It's all them. about re about rentals. Yeah, but you go to three different spots. They go to uh, an affordable one. They go yeah. to a, a weird one, and then they go to a luxury one, and it's really really neat places yeah yeah so anyway uh, but uh, you know uh, I, 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 last night <clears throat> god bless me gargly throat last night i watched the uh, the, the tonys Ugh. why do you do this to yourself well i like to i like i like to i like to see uh homosexuals where they win everything <laughs> Well, did you see the fellow who's been campaigning to win because he wrote something called the slave play? Walked out when he didn't win. Oh, wow. really? Really? He stormed out. Oh, wow. oh okay. They, they do a little too seriously. Yeah. Uh, because I... my play is inclusive, and how dare you not? You're all racist and blah, blah, blah. You know. Well, we've been watching this new thing, which is. Uh... Uh, the uh, American Crime Story impeachment the mm. thing about Bill Clinton. Oh, who cares anymore about Wait that? Minute. I'm watching the Grant, the uh, Tonys last night, and a lot of their cast were actually there as presenters because they're big Broadway stars. Right. Uh, uh, Annalee Ashford plays right. Paula Jones, and then uh, uh, they got this really fat actress uh, mm -hmm. to play. To, and I don't, I don't know her name is, but she's also another Broadway baby. Uh, but they got this fat actress to play Monica Lewinsky. <laughs> now, if you all remember, Monica Lewinsky wasn't what you would call fat. 
No. A little, a little chunky, but not. He bad. was what we call drafting. Uh, uh, pleasingly plump, maybe is another term. How she, about deliciously curvy? Deliciously <laughs> curvy, but she, she was super fat. attractive. This Absolutely. girl is fat. Lovely, lovely, body. and not pretty. And not pretty. You know, Monica Lewinsky is very, very attractive woman. It's a very attractive How, face. how is the show? Is the show worth watching? It's uh, it's actually uh, trash, but fun trash. All right. You know, I mean, the trouble is what they're doing is they're doing history. And what they're doing is they're re re rewriting history <clears> in <throat> their image. And uh, it's all things. We know how it turns out. You know, you right. go. I wonder how this uh, eight eight piece series is going to turn out. No, we know how it's going to turn out. You know, um, yeah, there was some grab ass in the White House, and he got caught for it. Yeah, so you got and you got uh, uh, who who's playing uh, Clinton, uh, the British actor, uh, Marjorie. I can't think of his Michael, name. But... Michael Sheen or somebody? No, 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 no. no. It, 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 he's Sheen. actually doing a very good job of it. I'll remember his name in a second. I will say I watched a documentary about that whole thing. Mm -hmm. And I had when it happened, I was like in my 20s. Mm -hmm. I, I definitely had a different perspective once I saw the documentary. Because mm -hmm. when I wasn't I was paying attention back then, but yeah. not a lot. How, how so did it change your perspective on it? It made me have a different view of Bill Clinton. What and what made what did you think of Bill Clinton after that? Well, I mean, I it's not like I didn't think he did anything wrong back then. I did, but it made me be more like now I'm just I, like I always question what a, what a cad, you know, what a but they all are cads. Yeah, I know. I mean I he was a cad, but, and they're all but, fucking everybody. But she, you know, uh, she was a young woman trying to seduce an older guy. She went oh, you know, and apparently, no, and again, I, I'm going to say I apparently, make the wife she's... of some guy that she was doing before Bill Clinton came out of the woodwork last week. What was this? Some ex-wife of some fellow that Monica Lewinsky was doing yeah. before Bill. Um, well, I'm sure. I mean, uh, but, uh, but she... Uh, she came on career Bill. advancement. You know, she came on to Bill and it wasn't Bill shouldn't have take done it. OK, oh, yeah. but that's what he always was. He was he had a history of that, Alex. Oh, yeah, of course. But let's face it. It's grab ass in the workplace, which happens at every workplace, everywhere around. Not Why anymore. Not yeah. anymore. You know, it might still happen more than we want to think. Oh, I think it happens all the time. That's what people happen all the time. Much. Themselves. There's articles about it all the time. You know, their their work husband or their work wives, and that's why during COVID, so many people, their relationships broke up because people don't see their work husband or their work wives, whatever. There's grab asses in the office in the workplace. That's always going to be there. Yeah, yeah. And Hello. many times it's because either the man or the woman is trying to get career advancement by hooking up with a superior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I just maybe in this documentary it was it was biased in favor of her. I just felt like she was treated pretty bad. I just oh she no she was oh, treated, yeah. you, you know who treated her badly that Linda chick. Well, not that was terrible. In the end, who treated her terribly was the press, yeah, and the American public. Yeah, she gave a TED talk on shaming. Yeah, because she was really shamed by the press for years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and 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 the press just piled on. Uh, uh, and and uh, it, it was terrible. It was just, it was absolutely. And imagine terrible. if it happened now, how much piling on there would be. Oh, God. You know, it just wouldn't stop. But again, this goes back to the original, like, thought when we started this, uh, this conversation today. You know, for why that one versus all of the other ones that are happening at the exact same time, even worse so, why that one? Because it was sensational. Because it involved the highest uh, office in the land, right? But I mean, it happens yes. every single day. But every president had a mistress. Let's be honest. We know yeah. this. We, but in not those days, the press did not report on it. Probably a few misters as well. You know, again, I, I get to my old favorite, Jack Kennedy. Yeah. How many women did he? You know. A lot. Yeah. Amanda, you were trying to I say just said thing? I don't think Jimmy Carter was like that. No. I truly oh no. Oh no. Jimmy Carter uh, was true blue. So you know yeah. who else was? 
Well, Obama. O Obama. Right. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Do you and think I, Obama's going to mess with Michelle with the body? Well, what I was going to say is he wouldn't dare screw around with <laughs> no Michelle. No way. You know, yeah. she's bigger. I just than can't me. wrap my I can't wrap my head around Richard Nixon had Richard Nixon having a mistress. Uh, no. Did he have a mistress, Sh Shaggy? No. Not that I've ever heard of. I would assume he did, but I don't know. Uh. Yeah, we know that. But I mean, White Eisenhower had one for you know. We know that uh, that uh, uh, George Bush Senior did. Yep. Yeah. Did he? Yes. Did Gerald Ford? <laughs> did Truman have one? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Did he? Bush too. Did but George <laughs> W? Did w. I don't know if W did W. She. I don't think. So. I heard. I don't think so. Or we just don't know. Or nobody. He was just too stupid that we didn't care. <laughs> um, uh, but, uh, uh, you know. But again, you, Roosevelt, Warren G. Harding, all, you know, it's like, it's what it was. Roosevelt died with his mistress. Yeah. yeah. Did he really? Yeah. Then yeah. They, they called yeah. Eleanor and she was pit, and they got her out of the. Out yeah, of but the, Eleanor had the girlfriend living with her. <laughs> yeah. It, well, yeah, that too, you know. You know, Hickok or whatever her last name was. So what you're saying is relationship status long before Facebook could be made the case for that it's complicated. Well, no, I'll tell you, the status is, and I think it's the case with a lot of the first ladies, you can cheat, just don't get caught. Yeah. Just don't embarrass me. Don't embarrass me. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, because, it, you know, you, you're talking about guys who are going after power. And they have a hard, heavy sex drive because of that lust for power, you know. And um, uh, I think, uh, for instance, that Hillary knew everything that was going on. Oh, Her, what course. she got yeah. mad about is when he got caught. There were cases down in in um, where he was from. Where was he from? Arkansas. 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 Yeah. I mean, the stories go on and on. It's, it's, when I watched House of Cards, the first couple of seasons, all I thought about was the Clintons. The Clintons? Yeah, yeah just all the stuff that's in their past or the stuff from the stuff that goes on behind the scenes. And I just looked at the relationship of these two powerful, powerful individuals and how it was more of a, a parallel. But all of these things that are going on behind the surface, I just kept thinking of the Clintons that that's what, to me, I, I think that that's what those two have. Uh, yeah, I think House of Cards. I'm, I'm trying to. I, my my feeling on that was it it had a certain uh, reality to it, but it was it. it, it I don't think it was. I didn't get the feeling ever that it was based on the Clintons. No, nope. yeah. uh, I don't think Clinton was politically dishonest, whereas this guy was. And he was a mur he was a murderer. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, then there's that part. But I mean, you know, one could make the argument that it's the relationship, the, the understanding between the two principles that is the parallel. Um, and then stuff in their past, you know, there's lots of there's lots of pointing finger pointing of murder with the Clintons that's out okay. there on the conspiracy level, right? So it touches on those things and makes it a more compelling drama. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it's, uh, it, but uh, uh, I, anyway, what I was got back, back to was last night with the Tonys. Just amazing how many of these people wind up doing TV shows. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they brought, brought they go, uh, like you told me, Shecky, when I watched Be Positive and I really yeah. liked Anna Lee Ashford. Oh, hey, she's a Broadway baby. She's no, a Tony, big star. Tony, Tony big Broadway star. On, on Broadway. And mm -hmm. I go, what? You know, I, I never heard of her, you know, so uh, and and then uh, then I see this woman last night on, who plays Monica Lewinsky on that other show, who's also a Broadway a person who worked on Broadway. They, they, I can't remember the name of the show that she was in. And then she did some kind of introduction. But I mean, it's amazing how many people TV, especially series are using people who are on, from Broadway. Because I think Broadway has a limited. Well, you're doing eight shows a week. That ain't an easy job. Let's be honest. Right. No. And and you, not only are you doing the eight shows a week, uh, but you know it'd be really nice to. Uh, it, there is an advantage. 
to doing Broadway. It's the same advantage of doing TV. And that is you're really in one place all the time. So if you've got a family or whatever, it's a good mm-hmm. job to have because it's structured and it's in one place. A lot of people go out to Hollywood, try to get serious because they want to spend more time with their family. But yeah. I also make more money in Hollywood than they do on Broadway. Oh, right. My- that was my question. That was my question for my New York friends. Like you got a New York actor who's been good at Broadway forever. Maybe they get nominated for Tonys now and then. Do they make a decent living compared to the other people in the acting world? Or is it only the very cream of the crop that do well? Like if you're Nathan average- Lane status, you probably do. Yeah. You know, Audra McDonald, you do because they can sell a show. Mm. But, but other shows nobody's ever heard of, would that person make money? They'd make, they'd make a decent amount. Decent money, if, for instance, but they're not Anna, making fifty thousand dollars a week. If Anna <laughs> Lee Ashford could make a lot of money on Broadway. I think she'd probably be there instead of Hollywood right now. Yeah. But she's doing that American Crime Story series and she's doing Be Positive, uh, you know, because that's where the money is. Plus, also Broadway had been shut down for 18 months. Oh, yes, yeah. that too. That too. And, and now we get back to mediocre plays for people who want to travel across the bridge. <laughs> yeah. The bridge and tunnel. No, no, no. We're no. We're getting all the new plays this season are black themed. Really? Oh yeah. 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 Although I was happy last night, Tina didn't win. I it's thought it was a musical. Stewart. Nothing against it, but it's a what? Jukebox musical. Mm-hmm. So I just I just looked it up here. It says the average the median salary of Broadway is one hundred twenty seven thousand. But it goes as low as twenty six thousand and as high as seven hundred thousand. Is that a yeah? But, that, but that's going to be what's his name in the Music Man, you know? Um, exactly. Uh, so, I mean, exactly. they're making a hundred grand a year if they're a reasonable actor. That's not. So yeah, bad. but if you're doing a TV show and it becomes Grey's Anatomy, right. you're making a hundred thousand dollars and more an episode a, a week. Yeah, <laughs> and and it only takes you twenty six weeks out of your life to do that. Yeah, right. Yeah. Whereas Broadway, yep. you got another show tonight, you got another show tomorrow, you got another show after that, you got another show two months. And it's the night. same flipping thing every night. <laughs> well, that too. And, you know, sometimes you can't really see it, but under their breath, they're kind of looking at each other like, so where are we going for dinner tonight? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but I went to see, because uh, um, Slayton wanted to go, we went to see the Carol King thing. Beautiful. Mm, beautiful, yeah. Mm-hmm. And by the time we got to it, everybody had been doing it so much that they were just re- they were just ramp- rapping, rambling, rambling off the lines. Yeah, yeah and how, we, how quickly can we do this so we can get, again get out and go to Sardis? Yeah, know, yeah. or go home and go to sleep. Or go home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, uh, I, the best time to get a good Broadway show is like uh, what? In the first, I usually try to go like. <laughs> a night or two before it opens because you're going to definitely get the cast because mm. those are like the critics nights and, you know, and before the show is pretty much written in stone at that point right? oh you have to lock it in at least two weeks before that yeah but just because you go before it opens doesn't mean you're not getting the show the same people are going to get on opening night no no yeah you're going to get that but you're also definitely going to get the cast yeah Mm-hmm. Now, where when, six when months you fir- later mm-hmm. person X that you were dying to see they're not working tonight when you yeah. first went to see Hamilton how much did you pay $90 that was when it was off Broadway it was at the public theater public theater $90 and, how and, much did my, and I think I've told this story probably on here when my I had seen it again playing like 200 bucks on Broadway but then my brother says I'm getting tickets do you want to go Three thousand dollars a ticket. Holy crap! No. Wow. Yeah, and and nobody blows you for that price, by the way. <laughs> you know, and that's the one I've told you that story, Ben. That's when I got into the fight with the woman sitting in front of me because she was on her phone the entire show. Oh, uh, and she explains to me when I say, "Could you put your phone away and stop?" Because I'm working. <laughs> and it's it's interesting. I'm sure other people. Wow. Agree can identify with this too. New York has this maj- uh, majestic thing to it. I know people that have gone from where I'm at, Western Canada, to New York and paid a thousand 
dollars US, right? Which is more money, which is like a million dollars Canadian, hmm. um, to go see Wicked. And 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 they didn't even didn't even flinch at it because the experience of seeing Wicked on Broadway, they would have paid whatever to do that. And it's interesting how New York has that magnetic pull that sure. people are willing to pay so much to see these shows. It's the same reason why people go to Disneyland or any of that other stuff. You know, it just that's what it is. Wicked is not. I wouldn't I, go see I, Wicked if you gave me a thousand dollars. Right. <laughs> I don't know. Wicked isn't a bad show, from what I hear. Right, Jackie. Well, so I, had a, I had a ticket for it the week before it opened, and something happened at the show, and I had to work, so I didn't go. So you never saw Wicked. I've never seen Wicked. Oh, okay. Because what we happens saw, to me, once, once, that, once well, that happens, it's like, eh, screw it. Why are you I'm saying that, go. Steve Bender, that you'd never go see it? I'm just not a musical person, really, and it doesn't, I mean, I like some classic musicals, but that just doesn't seem interesting to me. Are you a Wizard of Oz fan? I am a Wizard of Oz fan. I think it's a great movie. I'm a fan of the book. I'm not a fan of the movie. Yeah. Well, the books are amazing, right? Well, I met yeah, my I wife. I think the 39 Wizard of Oz is not a very good picture, but nobody else thinks that. <laughs> I love it. Well, that's, why... opening the, that's opening the Academy Theater this week. Yeah. Let me, let me ask you this, though. I, I bet it's not film either. I bet they're showing a digital copy of it. Of course. Well, uh, you know, um, <clears throat> but uh, what is it about the Wizard of Oz exactly that you don't like? I mean, I think it's it's a very simple film. It's not, you know, it doesn't... it's just I, I don't want to say very. It's just I I can't even explain it because I like all the people who appear in it, the mm. actors and actresses. But there's just something about that. Film. Music is well written, you know. Yeah. Yep, Harburg. It's just the look of the film. I can't explain it. Yeah. Yeah. And it was over, or maybe it also has to do with everyone telling me it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. Well, it was over the top. I mean, it, nothing had been made like that before, right? I mean, that color, all those bright colors and things. Yeah, was... oh, I don't know about that. You know, but it's also, it's like um, singing in the rain. I really like the movie, but I'm tired of hearing it's the greatest thing, again, since sliced bread. What about well, the, bandwagon, about? the bandwagon is a better film. It's always fair weather. How, uh, how about the, the, the argument people make that uh, uh, Citizen Kane is the greatest film ever made? I've never seen it's that. It's a movie. very, very good never, film. You've never it's seen that movie? It's, it's certainly, it's not I've silly to say that. I mean, you could disagree or agree, but it certainly is a top 10 film. Oh, it's certainly it's a, very a top good 10 film. Oh, absolutely. Ma Mandy says she's never seen it. See, I, never, on, I, never on TCM I understand that. I understand that. Eight o'clock tonight, it's on TCM. Oh. Really? <laughs> it's, a, it's a great movie. It's a great movie. And you know what it's up against? Hmm? The William Randolph Hearst two hour documentary on American experience on oh, TV. So it's a, that's a two nighter they're doing. Yeah, it's a two nighter. Yeah. Uh, I'll only be able to see half because tomorrow I'll probably be blind. But. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, uh, I, mean, I think with the Wizard of Oz, it's that it was this ritual that it would be on TV and the holiday. I think that I think that's LA. what it was. Is that once a year you'd watch it, it would be kid. on Channel Two right. at eight o'clock on Sunday, and let's all get yeah. around the TV well, and right. watch the Wizard of Oz. So yeah. Yeah. More than just the movie. Where the most the highly movie. overrated movie of all time, and there's a reason for it. Uh, is uh, it's a Wonderful Life? Yeah, I feel the exact uh, same. Jackie said about that movie. Yeah. It's a Wonderful Life, and the only, reason, movie. the only reason it became big was it was public domain. It was in public domain. Nobody had to play to show it. Right. So, so at Christmas time, you would tune in. Every station had a copy of it, and they were running it. I mean, so this yeah. one was grainier than the other one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's my favorite back in the day. Thank you for telling me that. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. But uh, it, what were you saying, Mandy? I said I thought I think it's a good movie though. I mean, I think it's a good story. Well, it's Frank Capra, and it's what they refer to as Capricorn. No, it's a very good <laughs> movie, but it's not. Again, it's not this masterpiece. Yeah. Oh, I can see that. What you're saying. You know how I felt? I feel that way about Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs because when I grew up, everybody was talking about Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs and what a masterpiece it was for an achievement out of its time and all that. Yada yada yada. And I was like, fuck that. Give me Aladdin or The Lion King. I like those way better. Um, people, but people, people there's no reverence for Snow White. 
Yeah. That was the first movie my mom ever remembered seeing was Snow Well, White. because it was the first yeah. full length color right. animated picture in mm-hmm. 37. Yeah. I don't even know what the first movie was I ever saw. I, I can't even tell you. Because she's the same age as you, I think, Alex. But that's the one, the first one she remembers seeing. Yeah, I, it, I, 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 I'm trying to think. I mean, my parents would have had to physically pick me up and take me to a theater. They, they didn't show these things on television when I was. No. Yeah. And I can't remember what movie I went to. What the it was first... probably some Hopalong Cassidy movie. No, it wasn't <laughs> that. It wasn't that. Those were the Kitty Matinees. I think mine was Babes in Toyland at the Radio City Music Hall. Oh, oh the, the 62 version? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I saw that at Radio City. Yeah. Um, I uh, Let me see here. I, I, can't, I can't remember. I don't, I don't remember what the first movie was. I, I mean, I can tell you a bunch of films I saw around that time, but I can't tell you which was, quote, right. the first one. Well, your parents had to take you to it. That, Are we that, talking theater or television? Of course, because yeah. then I would just say an R gang film. Oh, you, know? oh, you had yeah. television to look at. I see. Okay. Mine was that Uncle Remus movie. Song of the South. Song of the South. Yeah, Song of the South. Or, I don't know which one was first for me. I know uh, two that were sub-1980. One was Bambi, and the <laughs> other one was uh, Robin Williams' Pop, which probably explains a lot about me. That, those <laughs> yeah. are my first yeah. Robert Altman's Popeye. Yeah, but it, 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 Mandy was uh, was saying, um, what was it you said you watched? The- like Song of, that's the first one I remember. I think that's probably- Song the- of the South, yeah. That and Jungle Book. Yeah, try, try and watch it now. Yeah, you can't find a copy of it anywhere. No. No. I mean, I have one if you want to watch it. <laughs> yeah. And I think, yeah. and I remember Jungle Book too. Either one of those, I can't remember which one was the first. Was Actually, one I liked the new Jungle Book, the live mm-hmm. action version. I thought it was yeah. really- what very good yep. you know my first film was probably something at radio city i would think from 60 around 61 i would say I probably think. and i think i went to radio city music hall when i was a kid my parents took me there but i can't remember what movie we saw well that was that era they were running all the disney crap you know mm-hmm. See, i envy right? that state. Look, or it could have been absent-minded professor which actually is a good movie that's a great what, movie. Was, what was marjorie's yeah Mar- i don't remember you don't? I'm sure it was a cartoon type of movie. I mean, the first movie I ever saw that made me realize how good movies could be, okay, made me appreciate that this could be an art rather than just some kind of piffle, was Citizen Kane. Because they brought they, they re-released it in the 50s. That's when it actually became really popular. Yeah, yeah. And I went to it with yeah, a girl up in, first I was dead. I went to a girl with uh, uh, who lived in Sacramento, who I was dating, and we went and saw it. And I watched this thing, and I went, "Gee, there's more to movies than just you know pies in the face and things like that." You know? yeah. No, it's Did a you... really good movie. I was Has never... no, I, probably no one's mentioned the obvious one. That's to me the obvious one. Uh, to <laughs> me, I think it's a great movie, Gone with the Wind. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, they show it every five years in my neighborhood. They bring it up. It was a great movie, but it wasn't. It, 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 the first half of Gone. That's the first with, one I remember thinking, "Wow!" Like I was a little kid, and I was first just. Half of Gone with the Wind is 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 kind of historical, yeah, and an adventure. And the second half is a bodice ripper. Yeah. You know, <laughs> uh, it, it's it's the cover of every uh, Daniel Steele novel. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, it's really think, a very. Little girl, I guess that was the part that enthralled me. You know, the love <laughs> part. I may be wrong about this, Shaky, but I would almost believe that two halves of Gone with the Wind were written by two entirely different people. Yeah, but don't forget there were five directors on the film. Right. Yeah. Mm. What is this? You know, this was, not display, this was the MGM style. You know, where Victor Fleming was like the last man standing, and that's why he, he has the credit. Mm. Yeah. Please, you know, started like- with George, George Cukor was the original director, and then they brought in, and then they brought in, and then you know <laughs> this one came in, and you know yeah. it was the MGM style. Uh, Same with it, Wizard of Oz. Yeah, there were three or four directors on that one. I want to see Zack Snyder's Wizard of Oz, or uh, was Zack Snyder's Gone with the Wind? That'd be good. You know, it's like not- for instance, you Over the Rainbow, the five-hour version was King Veter, who has no credit on the film. <laughs> hmm. Well, also you had different. You get some different writers. Didn't F. Scott Fitzgerald contribute to Gone with the Wind? Probably. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, but it, it uh, you know, it, I, 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 I but that I, was also the Hollywood style then where you had, you know, you get going, I guess you want to call it the writer's room, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, another it, one that came on like once a year on TV and we all were like, <gasps> you know, and gathered around the television to watch it. And yeah. Well, I mean, it, you know, it was a big picture and it was promoted big and it had a lot of publicity behind it. And so it became the most highest grossing film of all time. I think it still remains that um, uh, uh, per ticket uh, number. If you adjust for no? inflation. Oh, if you want to do that for adjustment, Birth of a Nation made more money. Okay, but what I'm talking about is ticket sales. I think it didn't go on with the Birth of a Nation had more ticket sales. Yeah, Birth of a Nation, I think, did. Really? Birth of a Nation, a movie they would, wouldn't allow me to teach at the end of my career in my film studies class, not, you know, canceled. Isn't it amazing that the two films we're talking about here as having made Civil a lot War. of money are both the most racist films ever made? But all of Hollywood syntax comes from Birth of a Nation, and not to show that to film students is insane. Oh, I think it's important for them to see right. it. I, I, you know, you can, you can decry the. It's a very, very well-made movie. Yeah, Matt, you, no, I'm not, not, not talking about politics of right. it. Right. You, you know, you can, you contextualize it and talk about the racism, but you know, geez. what, what it was, and I think it has to be taken in that context, is that the, it, it's the summation of everything D.W. Griffith had done for the previous years, doing all these movies. He did, what, hundreds of them, didn't he? Well, the one reelers and two reelers. Yeah, the one reelers. Yeah. And he learned about, you know, close-ups and created close-ups. And Billy Bitzer had a lot to do with that. Absolutely. You know, uh, but to not show it in a film class. Crazy. Is crazy. And you know, but, you know, this new Academy Theater that's opening, it's going to have all these exhibits. Apparently, there's an exhibit of racist cartoons. Thank goodness, because there were some great ones. <laughs> and but part of their thing is, and this will lead to discussions. Right. So what you and I are going to over to the Academy Museum, and then we're going to have a discussion with someone standing next You're to us. We're going to have a two-hour discussion about a seven-minute film. Right. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. Yeah, you but this is going to lead to a dialogue about Speedy Gonzalez. Give what, me a call. What are we I'll doing? I'm sure you guys remember there was a D.W. Griffith cinema, right? No, not anymore. Theater. Oh, really? Yeah. 44th Street, if I yeah. remember correctly. I, yeah. I hate this revisionist history. You know, if somebody did something at one time Planet. that had impact, then it shouldn't be decried as not being able to be shown. You know? I mean, what do we do? Do we, do we say, look, do we, do we throw out all our Bill Cosby comedy albums because they're not funny anymore because of what he did? Yeah. Bill into? Cosby, and look, I'm not a fan of he was very funny, though. The he old was very, funny. very important. Yeah, and very important. It's been a lot of money on, on black colleges and education. You know, probably there was a lot, a lot of good that he did. Uh, Steve, uh, Chappelle has a routine oh, about that. Yeah, probably the, the first black guy I saw in a TV series. But what was before I spy? What's that? Yeah. Uh, Who had a black lead before Robert no, Cole? Nobody. Bill Cosby. Nobody. No, nobody. You know, oh, you know, R. Kelly got a, got convicted today. Yeah, he got convicted. Yeah. Yeah. R. Kelly. Uh, he did. Yeah. yeah he surprise, got surprise. surprise. <laughs> racketeering. What about the? Um, well, the here's the thing. I've been watching a lot of uh, uh, a lot of uh, uh, what's his name? Um, the guy who died last week. Norm Macdonald. Uh, Melvin, Melvin, Van, Melvin Van Peebles. Because Mel I, Melvin Van Peebles. Well, I knew Melvin Van Peebles. Uh, used to do. That's Mario's dad, right? What? Yeah, that's Mario. Mario's 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but uh, um, uh, Norm Macdonald, I didn't pay that much attention to him. To tell you the so truth. good. So I good. Started going back and watching him on YouTube this week. He was brilliant. Brilliant. And one of the things he did was he, he did one of these, you know, comedians getting coffee with Seinfeld, and he brings up about the fact that. Uh, who was it? The guy, the uh, murderer, the serial killer who killed the nurses. I can't remember his name now. Beck? Ed no. Bundy? No. Bundy. Ed no. Bundy? It's, it's it, one of the lesser remembered. Anyway, okay. go ahead. But anyway, they charged him with eight counts of murder and one count of felony breaking and entering. <laughs> That's all Norm had to say. I mean, he kind of followed up with, uh, you know, I mean, come on. 
you know, what, if we don't get them on the eight murders, we can get them on the breaking and entering? Yes, Mike. Same show, because uh, we we're just talking about Cosby. And he was telling Jerry, he said, hey, listen, I was just talking to another comedian. And the comedian said to me, I think the worst part about the Bill Cosby thing is the hypocrisy. And this is the perfect Norm MacDonald set up and joke. And he said, you know what? I don't think the worst part was the hypocrisy. And Jerry goes, no. He goes, no. I think the worst part about Bill Cosby was the raping. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect yeah. Norm MacDonald joke. <laughs> and I think he said, if you're a rapist, it's hard to be hypocritical. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. Yeah. How many non hypocritical racists do you know? <laughs> yeah. Hey, listen, we've run out of time. Uh, God, I, this goes by fast. <laughs> yeah. It really goes by fast. Uh, I, uh, I, I, I'll, I'll put a notice up as to whether I'm doing this or not next week. I probably will, probably with dark glasses on. But I think it takes about f uh, three, four to three to five days to get into any kind of shape to be able to do stuff. Uh, so I'm not doing any shows this week, not posting any of the shows. The website will be kind of dead. Uh, but uh, that means I have a message left here from who? I get to share. <laughs> What is this? Phone. Voicemail on the phone. Okay. It's probably somebody <laughs> saying, hey, it, your warranty is about to run out. Of your <laughs> I'm, I'm being investigated by the feds this morning, apparently. So, yeah. uh, are you really? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, yeah. Uh, and I, it's a problem for me because uh, uh, I'm, I'm beginning to really believe I don't know how to drive anymore. Mm. Shecky, next time I come out, you got to put me out. You keep the saying that. And then, well, thank God I have a 25 year old car. So if you wreck it, okay, I'll buy a new one. <laughs> is, your license, is your license still valid? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, it's a, I just got it back, a new one last year, I think it was. All right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I, I think about driving down a highway in a car and I'm going, can I still? Yeah, but the problem, and I've said this to you before. It's the other drivers who are insane yeah. when you're drunk. Because I just, you know, I'm a little old man. I drive yeah. straight. I drive 60 miles an hour. I don't weave in. And I'm just watching cars weaving around me and, you know, doing it. Yeah. Wow. That's what my mom complains about. And she, she said, I was just turning into my apartment complex. And this guy just laid on his horn. I guess I just didn't whip in fast enough. Mm. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Vernon, you've been a little quiet today. We, we were running over here. Anything that was on your mind at all? Well, I did look up that uh, moth joke on YouTube that you were talking about, Norm MacDonald. And no, you're yeah. right. You're, you're right. The timing is everything. Well, it, 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 it's <laughs> like the bear joke where you got to tell oh. this whole setup to the whole thing. I love and the bear joke. Come up with the punchline. I mean, I could tell everybody the punchline here, and you would probably laugh if I did a short version. But if yep. you did a long version of it and you were waiting for this punchline, yep. you'll bust a gut. It's genius. Yeah. And Norm MacDonald does it well because he just he keeps, you know, he just keeps going on and on and on. <laughs> it's kind of, I describe it like the bear joke that my friend Penn Gillette used to tell. <laughs> I love that joke. And, and, but, you know, he would go on and on forever on it. And, and the uh, same thing, the aristocrats joke is a good example of that too that and the wonderful thing about the aristocrat joke is every comic has a different way of telling it yeah and probably mandy doesn't even know what we're talking about not a clue but the punchline is we call ourselves the aristocrats right there's a documentary about it you should watch mandy it's <laughs> yeah we but, call ourselves the aristocrats yeah <laughs> yeah yeah What's the name of the app? <laughs> so what do you call yourselves? You know. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right, the that's my lead in about what What's they do in this act is uh, so it's really the lead in to the joke rather than the punchline that's funny. Right. But if he didn't have the punchline, the whole thing would be useless. So <laughs> it's, it's the same thing with the with the moth joke. So I implore you, go on you just on YouTube, put in Norm Macdonald moth joke. And you I listen to Gilbert it. Godfrey do the aristocrats joke. <laughs> I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm going to do both as soon as we log off. Yeah. yeah. And the bear joke, uh, uh, gee, I... I don't know where that's at. Well, I don't, I don't know in too many places. Uh, the punchline on that one is... Uh, I, be, you didn't I don't, come think, here to I don't hunt. think you came here to hunt. Uh, <laughs> I know. The, the joke goes on forever. 
you know. Oh my God, that's funny. Yeah. Anyway, hey, listen, we ran a little bit over, but uh, I will uh, hopefully see you <laughs> next week. I'll probably be wearing dark glasses so that I don't. Yes, yeah, you're kids. a Hollywood star. Yeah. Yeah. Little, uh, so I won't be scaring little kids who will be watching. You know. It's <laughs> like this. I call these my. I just got cataract surgery glasses. Oh, really? Oh. Did That's you what get, they look like. I feel did you like. get cataract surgery? No, I didn't. But I just bought these sunglasses, and they just remind me of a senior citizen that just got cataract. No, surgery. no, 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 no. Marjorie, if you're going to beat the shit out of him, this is the right week to do it. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I, mean, I guess I could just wear, I guess I could just wear glasses like this and it wouldn't look that bad. It would it magnify the bruises, you know. <laughs> no, 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 no. Dark glasses and a beret. Come on, go full beatnik for it. Yeah, oh, I, I do have a beret here. I think I could do that. I could I could do that. Hey, uh, 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 Scott, you've been quiet. Nothing to say? Nah, nothing. Nothing. But nice to have you here. You know? Nice to listen. Yeah. And uh, Mike Chisholm, thank you. Thank you to Steve Bender. Oh, there he is. Oh, okay. Uh, and thanks to Scott Boddicker and to Rick Sheckman and to Len LaFrisco and to OK Mills, uh, Marjorie, uh, Vernon. Thank you so much, Vernon. Uh, we'll be talking soon. Mandy, thank you. Always lovely to have you here. Glad I got to pop uh, in. Between you and Marjorie, you grace the, the group. And, Thank you. Uh, yes, and, Marjorie. And Jeff Stein, always a pleasure to see you too. I guess everybody's starting to hang up, so I'll hang up on them too and say to everybody, thank you so much for joining us. And Bye. maybe we'll see you here next week. Good luck with your surgery. Thank you. Bye. Good luck. Yes.